says, K-I-S-S, -S, keep it simple and successful, all right? So what do I mean by that? Here's what happens to traders. Traders, by nature, think that the more information they have, the better they're going to be informed, all right? Now, there's a balance in that. It's not that you don't have too much information or not enough. You have to know where the balance is, and balance comes from experience, okay? Now, we talked about this a couple of week, weeks ago about giving a value system to your criteria, all right? So I look at it and I say, well, the MACD broke to the downside. I got a zero line break. What's that worth on a scale of one to 10? Maybe an eight, okay? Oh, I also broke the T3 to the downside. What's that work on a scale of one to 10? That may be an eight, all right? Oh, uh, my... Um, uh, I'm, I'm right here at a, uh, at a um, uh, fib, and uh, it is a, a 0 0.50 fib, right, which is a bounce point, right? There's no such thing as a 0 0.500 fib. So I'm at a 0 0.500 fib, which is not, doesn't, isn't even real. Why is it on a retracement chart? Because it's a bounce point, right? And so you go, well, well, that's pretty significant information. I'm in a trade already to the downside. What should I do, All right? So you see, it's not about a whole bunch of stuff because when you go in the charts and you look at what the bankers do, they are not doing rocket science, all right? What happens to traders is they want to make this rocket science. So let's just take this Euro Aussie here, okay? They had a flash crash last before when all this happened okay we all knew what that was okay and then we settled down and we started with a one we got a two we're in a three wave with a sideways move to continue the wave to the downside does everybody see that does everybody see that all right we have enough information in the charts to determine some yeah pretty flag exactly right we have enough information to tell us this is what they're doing, all right? So, you know, how did they do that? Okay, here's how they did it. They did it with a flag. There it is. How hard is that? Here's how they came in. That's how they're coming out, right down to probably, well, almost to, almost to the target tonight. You see that? All right. Now, that's not rocket science. That's very simplistic. The trouble with traders is they think that the bankers are doing crazy stuff and the bankers are not doing crazy stuff. They do very simplistic stuff. Now, yes, there are times when they do things like this big, huge move to put in a two wave. But if you recognize this is a one and this is a two, and you recognize that it was a two, you understand why they did that, okay? Normally they do an A, B, C up to the top but they didn't do this time because they're trying to get it going because they had so much volatility in the market. Does everybody see that? So much volatility in the market. The sooner we get sellers, the sooner we go to target. Does that make sense? Does that make sense? All right. That's our job is to figure what they're doing. All right. <laughs> Here you go, Bill. You're funny. Right? Our job is to figure them out. You can also see that they did an ABC right there, which got a little bit of traction, but not enough. And because they didn't get enough traction, did not take out the bottom here, they had to go back up here. All right, so they came back up here. Remember, this market is manipulated. 100% of this market is re manipulated. What does that mean? That means they're manipulating it. It's very simple, all right? They're manipulating the market. They are doing things in the chart so that all traders know what to do. Now, all traders means you and me, all right? Not just the bank traders, because the information they are printing in the candles right down here, all this information is available to every single trader on the planet. All you got to do is watch candles. It doesn't matter whether you're in our charts or somebody else's charts, the information is there, all right? So let's take this down a little lower to a 60 minute chart here, okay? So here we had this uh, triangle. You can see at the end, they said, you know what? We're having trouble, we're having trouble, we're having trouble, all right? So what did they do? Come on, all right? So they had this top here and they did this right here. Now, 
here's the reaction. Here's the reaction right here to the symmetrical triangle, which was uh, going down. Here's a symmetrical triangle right here. This is what they did with that information right there. All right. Is it, is it, what, what should I say? Does it make sense that what they did was what, what the, the structure told them to do? See, it's all about structure. It's all about structure. It's not about your stupid indicator. If you got an indicator, get rid of it. It doesn't know squat about structure. The structure was a symmetrical triangle, which we got in all the way back here going down. Therefore, this thing is going to try to go down. Here's what they did with that information. The very first candle was 70 pips. The second candle took it down to 120 pips. The next candles took it down to 200 pips. All right. Now, when you look at it now in the past, does it surprise you that they did that? Does it surprise you? That's a question. No. All right. Now, what happens if you miss that trade? If you miss, oh, Steve, you're here. Uh, give me a second, and I'll, I'll show you how to do what, I'm, what we were talking about earlier, okay? So give me a second, and I'll do that, okay? See, the information was there. That's what the information was. You always have the ability. This is why it's so important to do forensics. You always have the ability to go back in the past, back in the past, and find out what did they do with the information. And you can simply do it because they're, they're not doing rocket science. Let's just do that real quick, and I'm going to help Steve for a minute. He has a, a question that I can show him in a minute, all right? So here's what they did coming down, all right? So here's what they did. They did a little bear flag, all right? They were able, successful in getting the sellers in, but they weren't successful, so they did an A, B, C. Close and reverse right there. There's the result of the close and reverse after an ABC. What does an ABC always say? An ABC is a continuation pattern. It always says, whatever you were doing, that's what we're going to do again. There's the result of that. All right, then they pulled back up because they ran out of sellers. Why did they run out of sellers? Because they hit the S7 of the HSI target. Remember, you know, we're the only ones that have an HSI target, but it's based on the waves. So they know exactly where those waves are because that's a, that's a, uh, that's a number they know from the beginning, right? So they do a pullback, right? They're, they're trying to get this to go down again. They get a close and reverse. What do they do? They put a descending wedge in right there. Uh, stay, yeah, that's exactly right. They're staying below the moving average. They're trying to, as long as we're below this moving average, we have more sellers and buyers. Yeah, here's the deal. Yeah, but the candles went up, man, but we have more sellers and buyers based on that moving average. It's a piece of information. See, all right, what did they do with that? They did a descending wedge. Here's the result of the descending wedge right there. See, this is not rocket science. Anybody can learn this. This is the problem. Anybody can learn to trade the Forex. In my opinion, if you have average intelligence, you don't need to be brilliant. In fact, brilliant will probably hurt you. If you are brilliant, you're going to try to find more complicated ways to do it. And the bankers are not doing complicated. They're doing very simplistic things. All right. Now, they then come into a situation where things are not happening real well. All right. They keep breaking to the downside. Here's an ABC. Close and reverse, there's a result of another close and reverse right there. There it is. And they went all the way down to here, but they ran out of sellers. So what do they do? Come right back to the top. Close and reverse. There's the first move. They're not successful. Come back up. Exhaustion wick. There's the next move. Come back up. Close and reverse. There's the next move. They're not there. They can't get enough sellers. So they go up to the trend wall. There's the result of hitting the trend wall, and there's what they did with that. And here's what they did when they broke the symmetrical triangle. Is there any rocket science there? Is there any rocket science there at all? It's simplistic. Keep it simple and successful because they're not doing crazy stuff. All right. Now, you know, we've got traders who trade bats and butterflies and gutter and Gartleys and all kinds of crazy stuff. They do that. And because they see that, they should trade that. But what should the average trader trade? Should you trade a bat? Should you trade a Gartley? 
I've been trading for 20 years. All right, this is my 20th year of trading. And I, and for me to see a Gartley, I have to have a cheat sheet because I, all of a sudden I recognize maybe I got a Gartley, but I don't trade them. So I'll pop it up. I have a little file on my desktop. I'm going to pull it up right now for you. And I'm going to uh, pop it up and I'm going to put right here. And there it is. All right. So this is what I have. This is my cheat sheet because I don't trade Gartleys. They rarely do them, but when they do them, they do them. All right. So I need to know what it is. All right. So I'm able to measure X to B to B to C to D and I know what the move is or vice versa. All right. But they're not doing that on a regular basis. They are not doing that stuff. All right. And the number one thing I deal with traders and I deal with traders every single day. I deal with traders who are struggling. I deal with fast trackers who all of a sudden can't trade their way out of a wet paper bag. I deal with newbies who are trying to do, yeah, but, but my slow stochastic says this man and all that stuff. <laughs> yeah, exactly right, Jamie. Uh, my slow stochastic says that I'm going up and I go, that's because it's an indicator. If this, if this move goes up like here, right here, your indicator is going to tell you you're a buyer. You're not a buyer. You're a seller waiting for the top. You see, that information is erroneous and bad. Get rid of your indicators. Learn to trade price action because that's what they did right there. That's exactly what they did right there. All right, what do we got now? Can everybody see the flag pattern? Would you think they're trying to continue this to the downside? What do you think? Look at the MACD telling you you're going to the downside. You got a down channel. You're below this moving average and you're below the red moving average is way up there. All right. So what does the chart sell you tell you you're doing? You're a seller. That's what it tells you. It's not rocket science. I am a seller. Let me get all this off except for the last pieces of information. This is where we are right now. This is the real estate of the day. Right here is the real estate of the day right in here, down to the target, all right? So what are they telling us here? We're doing a flag, all right, which is a continuation pattern. That's how we got in. That means that's how we're coming out. Does anybody want that right there? Does anybody want that right there? Of course you do. Of course you want that, all right? Now, what did they do? Rocket science? No, they did a flag pattern. That's what they did. They didn't do anything fancy. Nothing fancy whatsoever, all right? Now, you say, yeah, but man, they're coming up right now. They're coming up because they don't have buyers. Understand that. When they run out of buyers, they got to go up and find the buyers. Why is that? Because professional buyers only sell at the top. They 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 trade a break to the downside because that's the new top, all right? What did they do? All the way here, sold at the top, sold at the top, sold at the top. See that? So what do I got to do? If I'm going to sell, I got to sell at the top. Now, let's take that piece of information into this right here to what's happening right now. Which way are they going? Are they going up or are they going down? Which way are they going? Question. Up to go down, Jamie. All right. So what I got to do is I got to be experienced enough and, and I got to be uh, uh, patient enough to wait for the top. The top is where I want to sell because that's where the big boys are going to sell. And why would they do that? Well, because the target is all the way down here. You see that? There, yeah, Ferex, you're right. Vess, you've done such a good job of learning Texan, I got to tell you. They're fixing to go down. That's a saying in Texas. When I first got to Texas and uh, I first got here, I didn't know anything about Texan, right? <laughs> and I didn't know anything about it. And they said, hey, man, we're fixing to go to the movies. I went, oh, man, that's awesome. I went in, took a shower, got ready to go. I come out, everybody's still drinking beer on the couch. I said, I thought we were going to the movies. And they said, yeah, we're fixing to go to the movies, but that doesn't mean right now. That means we're going to go to the movies sometime today. All right. We're fixing to go. All right. So Vess has learned that <laughs> we're fixing to go down. That's exactly right. And, it, and it's probably the best saying you ever learn in Forex is they're fixing to go down. Now, 
How will they do that? Well, they have two choices, all right? three choices actually. They could do this, do a flag, which would say we're going down. Would that say you're going down if they put a flag in here? Would everybody agree that would be it? Yes, okay, that's one way. The other way is to come right up here, square up right here and go down because they have a square up. They've just ran through that. So they got to come up and square down. Would that make sense? All right, yes, all right. Now, or the other way they do it is they do an A, B, C, all right, which will take a lot longer to do. But if they put the A, B, C in, every single trader who's a professional knows that we're going down. Every trader knows we're going down. So there are three ways to tell you we're going down. And we want to sell at the top because we want to sell with the professionals. We don't want to sell with the dumb money over at Forex Factory. All right. So whichever way they do that, and there are three options right there. And what do I got to do? This is your number one trade to learn. Wait for that trade to come to you. If I wait for that trade, all right, if it's a pull, if, it, if they put in a flag pattern, which will be a pole trade, all right, it's going to take a lot of candles to do that. You see that? It's the hardest trade to learn, but it's going to take a lot of candles to do that. I'm not in any hurry. Okay. If they just come up, pop and turn down, I'm going to look for a close and reverse right here, close and reverse to the downside. That could happen very fast. And the only other way is, and I don't want to get snookered because if they haven't squared up there and they decide to come down right here, I'm going to expect an ABC and then come down. See, so the number one trade I need to learn is to wait for that information. Wait, wait, wait. All right. All right. Does that make sense to everybody? We just took one currency and we, we looked through the whole thing and we said, okay, what are they doing? They're not doing rocket science. Get rid of the thought that they're doing rocket science. <clears throat> they're doing a few basic patterns <clears throat> and they're paying attention to the information. So what do I got to do? I got to learn those basic patterns. I got to learn how they actually move the market, not how I think they move the market. And as long as I'm relying on an indicator, I am in trouble because the indicator knows nothing about that stuff. All right. And all of us who are fast trackers and beyond, we all know that we can't use indicators. But the problem is there's a whole bunch of people in here still trying to use them. I still got them on my MT4 charts, man. You know, I mean, that slow stochastic, sometimes it looks perfect. Yeah, sometimes it looks perfect. What does it look if you do 300, 300 of them in a row? It doesn't look very perfect, all right? So Steve, here's how you do this, all right? So this is a, Steve asked me how to do this earlier and I said, I'll just show it to you here. All right, so let's say that I want a four decimal currency, all right? I find me a four decimal currency in here. Doesn't matter what it is, okay? I just found a four decimal, Aussie Swissy. I go over here to page and I export it to, all right? And I export it to, now I have saved all mine off here. A good idea for all of you who are traders is to save all your charts one time. It'll take you about 10 minutes to do that. And then you can pull them back anytime you want to, all right? So I'm gonna I save it off, all right? Then I come over here and I go, let me export to, all right? And I pull that four decimal currency back over here and I go like this, all right? Uh, hold on just a minute. Ex uh, I'm gonna import from, I had export to. Uh, I'm going to just grab a four decimal currency, any one, doesn't matter what it is, like this. And I do that, it builds the whole template with the six, RF6 and all that stuff. And over here it says Euro Aussie because that's what I grabbed. I don't want the Euro Aussie, I want whatever it is. And so I go over here and I change all these things. Or right down here on the left, I go change whatever it's be, Aussie, A U D, C H. And I click that there, dot F, which is the feed. And I click it, and now this will come up with the Aussie Swissy right there. See? And I change every one of these things like this. And then I go down here and change the name of this. Right click, just change the name. All right. Rename it to whatever I want it to be. All right. That's it. That's how you do it. It's so, so simple. It's quick. Less than a minute. All right. <clears throat> all right. So let me get rid of these. I don't want to, I don't have that on there. I've already got them all. Okay. Does that help you, Steve? Good. All right, fantastic. All right. So it's, it's, it's a one minute job, really. As long as you know the symbol. You say, well, hey, where do I find the symbols? 
you go up here and it says exchanges and tickers right here and you click here and there are exchanges and tickers for so many things you don't even want to know how many things are up here all right so uh let's see new york stock exchange i'm looking for uh something here come on You know, if I was looking for, you know, something specific here. Now, you know, there's 50,000 stocks. We don't have them all. We got the majors right here. So you'd be able to say, oh, that's the symbol. That's how you would check it. So it's really very easy. All right. There we go. Yeah, that's right. As long as you have uh, Bollinger Bands that tell you when. So we use Bollinger Bands different than what everybody else is using for. Everybody else is uses Bollinger Bands to tell them when momentum has entered the market, all right? So they go, oh, momentum has entered the market. By the time you figure that out, it has got to expand the Bollinger Band. We don't use them for that. We use them for, the, for when it's no longer a, a Bollinger Band, uh, and we're looking for the reversal. So you see right up here, we had 60-minute. Uh, we broke, breached the Bollinger Band. We open and close inside, open and close inside. We're looking for uh, an arrow and painted candle. There it is. And so there is our entry right there. Here's our stop right here. And there's the result of that trade right there. See, that's it. Totally different. We don't use them for the same reason everybody else uses them for. All right. So let's do another chart. Let's go over. Uh, you guys pick a chart. Somebody pick a chart. And we'll just go analyze it. And remember, the point is to keep it simple. All right, where is my charts? Oh, I guess I got rid of them. I don't know what happened. I, I log. EG, okay, we're gonna do the EG. All right, let me pull it up here. All right, Euro Yen, all right. So let's take a look and see what they've got. First of all, we have a break of the MACD to the upside. MACD always points the way. Did we break the T3? We did. So now the thing is, are they trying to do that? Would everybody agree that that's the question? Yeah, I mean, I mean before Bill scrolls off, these charts give you three critical C points from the big boys. If you learn the language, one, they communicate what they're doing. That's correct, Bill. Two, their communication amounts to a contract that they will do when they say they will do. Correct, Bill. We have to have confidence in the chart language. Exactly right. Bill, Bill can't, that's why when Bill speaks, I pay attention because Bill can say in a, in a half of a paragraph what I takes me an hour to say. <laughs> it's there. All right. So the currency tells you before you're doing anything else, it says, you better be careful because we may be going up. However, there's another piece of information. This says we may be going down. All right, so now we know the question. Are you going up or are you going up to here to bounce off to the down side? That's the two questions, all right? Now, we have to answer that from the chart. It's not about, I think it's going up, I think it's going down. That'll get you nowhere. What does the chart say we're trying to do right now, all right? And that's where the other charts come in, come in play, which is why you can't do it on MT4. All right, so what does this chart down here say? We're trying to go up. See the green? We're trying to go sideways. Nobody's interested, but it's a 10-minute chart. It's not that important. But this 60-minute says we're trying to go up. The 240 says we're trying to go up, and the 60 says we're trying to go up. Who trades the 240 in the 60-minute chart? Big boys, exactly right. Big boys trade it. So they're telling you, you better be careful because we're trying to go up. Yeah, but I figured it out earlier and then we were going down. Well, that's not the case now, right? See, so you always have to analyze what you're doing. Okay, let's go into the charts now again and let's look at it. Now, you can see that they had an exhaustion wick as they respected that top right there. So the question is, okay, where would I trade it if it did go down? Very simple. Put a single line trend line across the bottom here. And if I break that line right there, I'm possibly a seller. Where am I a buyer? So I'm a, I'm a seller here, 
If you break this to the downside, I'm potentially, it doesn't mean a sell, it just means I'm potentially a seller and I'm a buyer here. And I'm really a buyer above that line right there. Does everybody see that? Everybody see it? Is that rocket science? Is that simplistic? Of course it's simplistic because they're doing simplistic crap, right? That's all they're doing. They're not doing anything uh, fantastic. I know that the MACD says, yes, you have broken, uh, broken the zero line to the upside and you have broken the T3, but we don't have a lot of confidence in this move because you don't have anything happening yet. You see that? So the chart is telling us, be careful. You could go either way. All right now we go down and we look at the three musketeers and we already did they're going up they're going down they're going up and they're maybe coming down low right now this says we're going down this says we're going down this says we're going down all right so what's the preponderance of evidence tell you are they respecting the top and possibly going down or are they trying to break up what does the preponderance of evidence tell you remember your job is to put this guy this next candle, if it breaks down there, it's your job is to put him in the electric chair. He's been, he's been accused of a crime. His crime was aggravated result, uh, a robbery. Were you there? No. Was anybody else there? No. Did anybody see it? No. How do you put the guy, how do you convict the guy when nobody saw it? You do it because of the preponderance of evidence. If the preponderance of evidence says, yes, he was there. Yes, he had a knife. Yes, it's got blood all over it. Yes, uh, they, he left the, the glove at the scene. Yes, his car was out front. Yes, he has no uh, alibi for that time. You see, that's how you do it, right? Isn't that how you would do it if you got called to jury duty? Is that how you would do it? That was the question. Mm hmm. Oh, Jay Simpson's a good one. <laughs> I've had a few wrongful convictions. There you go, Amanda. You're funny. <laughs> I love your humor, Amanda. You're always great. All right. So we're looking for the preponderance of evidence. What happens if we don't find the, uh, the preponderance of evidence? What do we do with the chart? If we don't find the preponderance of evidence, what do we do with it? Wait. Exactly. We wait until we get the, leave it. Exactly right. Walk away till it tells you some more information. All right. But if it breaks and we decide, hey, you know what? This thing might just break to the downside. So then we would find the ATR target. You know all about that sort of stuff. And you'd see what the opportunity is. All right. So that's the opportunity. If they did a break, hook, and go right here, would anybody be interested, even though right now it says we don't know that? How much time do I have? I got a break, hook, and go. How long is that? That's at least 20 minutes. 10 minutes down, 10 minutes up, and then go. All right? So 20 to 30 minutes before that. You see that? If the glove doesn't fit, you must quit. <laughs> You're funny, Michael. All right? So will it break to the downside? I don't know. All right? So now there's another thing when you're dealing with the euro pound. What is the euro pound? It goes opposite of the pound. So something you have to check is what are the pounds doing? Are the pounds going up? And the pounds right now say, all right, the pounds say, you got to close and reverse right there. You have uh, definitely divergence. You're waiting for a MACD cross over here and you're breaking to break the T3 there. So the pound dollar says we're trying to go up. All right. Now, does that give you a piece of information on the euro pound to the downside? Would that give you a piece of information to the downside? Because the euro has to go opposite of the pound. It has to go News opposite. alert. All right. So if the euro, the pound breaks to the upside, which right now it's showing you a big piece of information, how big a piece of information? It's a close and reverse. That's not rocket science. That means that they sold it to the downside and they bought it immediately when they hit their target, whatever that was. All right, let's understand that, all right? Let's understand that because it's very, very important to understand. This is how the market gets moved, all right? So let me find that little uh, graphic. Hold on a minute. Here we go. All right. 
All right. So I have a friend of mine. This this example is built off my friend in Bank of Boston. All right. And he's at Bank of Boston. He is a bank trader. He's a client. He's a client uh, account manager there. At Bank of Boston, it's a very little bank. It doesn't even show up anywhere. They have 400 traders on the floor. 400, and it's a little bank that doesn't even show up. All right. So there are 300 bank traders who trade client accounts, bank accounts, and work on the swaps. Okay. Now. When they can't get something going, they talk to the floor supervisor over here and they say, listen, you got a hundred traders down there, each of them with a million dollar account. We want you to sell the currency down to this value right here. And when you get down there, we want you to close in reverse and we're going to enter to the upside. And that's how they do it. All right. They're manipulating the market behind the scenes. They can't find enough buyers to get where their agenda is for whatever reason, right? Maybe they got a Sony contract up there or something. Uh, who knows what they got? It doesn't matter to us, all right? So they sell to the point to the downside. This is why we get ABCs. This is why we get bull flags, all that sort of stuff to the point. And they all know this value right here. As soon as they, they execute, these guys close their sell enter their buy, and there's these guys coming in right there. Does everybody understand that? It's important you understand it because it happens every day, every hour of the hour. It is constantly happening in the charts, all right? So when you see a close and reverse, it means that this happened at hundreds of banks, maybe even a thousand banks, all right? This happened at a, a hundred banks or a thousand banks. Why does that happen? Because they all know the math. That's why we got to know the math. All right. So, you know, when they, they decided here, okay, so let's look at it here. They decided, listen, we don't have enough sellers to break this. All of you traders buy it to here. And we get to this point. We want you to sell. The first one was successful, sort of but it still didn't get them all, all the sellers. So now they waited for the rest of the banks to come in. They closed in reverse there. And there's the result of that information right there. That's the, that's the result right there, their information. They all know it. You got to know it. This is how they're manipulating the market. If you're watching a stupid indicator, you know none of that. None of that. What are they doing? Why are they doing this? Because they're manipulating the market. Why do they want to do that? Because the trade is to the downside. You can see that right here. How do we know that? Well, because the, the MACD is turned over to the downside, as you can see this right here. Now, it's still divergent. So now we have we still have caution because this one, this went lower, this did, this did not. Everybody see that? All right. This candle. You clear all the drawing. This candle went down here, but this did not, which tells us, all right, they're not really trying to go down. They're trying to go up right there, all right? There's the exhaustion wick, the close and reverse. They're trying to go up. You see that? Now, can we prove that from the chart? The chart says, let's see if we can prove that, all right? What does the pound say? The pound says, we're still trying to go down here. We're still trying to go, oh no, get the right tool. We're still trying to go down. We're still trying to go down. We're still trying to go down. We're still, we're trying to go up. We're trying to go up. We're trying to go up. So you see, this is the turn, right? What do I got to do when I see a turn? Wait, 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 wait for the information to come to you. It says, oh, by the way, we are going up. What would that information be? The number one piece of information is this right here, right here. A zero line break of the T3, of the zero line and a break of the T3 right there. That's where the trade exists. It does not exist down where you are right now. It exists up here. Yeah, but I'm down here. I got to give up 60 pips to get that. Yeah, but that's the target. That's the ATR to the day. That's where they're trying to go for the day. They're not worried about your the next 20 minutes for you, all right? They're, they're trading the, the bulk of this thing, the whole trade. You see that, all right? Now, there's nothing I showed you that is rocket science. None of that is rocket science. They're not doing fancy-smancy stuff. Keep it simple. 
find the areas, all right, find the areas where there is a barrier, all right? Now that's the job of a trader. How do I learn that? You gotta go do hundreds of them in the charts. All right, here's a barrier. I'm gonna put a slope support across that top. This is a barrier, all right? So this becomes the, the line of demarcation. If I break up in here, what are they telling me? If I break this line to the upside, what are they telling me? You're going up, right? All right. What if they come up here and do a close and reverse right here and scream it down? This is the pl place where they got to talk to you right there. When they come up to here, they got to either say we're doing this or doing this. Now, why do they have to do that? Because in order to manipulate the market and get it to go where they want it to go, they have to give the information to the traders. All right. The information is not a stupid indicator. The information is what are you going to do with that line? Does everybody see it? What are you going to do with that line? You break hook and go there to the upside. I'm a buyer. You close and reverse there. I'm a seller. You see how easy that is? All right. Not rocket science. Don't make it hard. I deal with traders every single day who do nothing more than complicate it. Yeah, but this says this. Yeah, but this says this. Yeah, but, yeah, but, yeah, but, yeah, but. You know how many times, you know how sick I am of hearing yeah, but? Yeah, but, yeah, but, yeah, but, yeah, but. All right, because traders think everything is important and everything is not important. What is important? Barriers. What are they doing? You see a close and reverse. That's a major piece of information right there. What are they trying to do? They're trying to go up. Why are they trying to go up? Big question. You have to learn the why of the market. Anybody can learn how to put a fib on, how to put a channel on, how to put a trend on. Why is the, the critical question. Why would they be going up? Are they going up to go down? Or are they going up to do a break, hook, and go? And once you got that figured out, it becomes very easy what you have to do. You have to, most important trade to learn, wait for them to tell you. If they come up here, break, hook, and go, you, got, you wait for that information, there you go, you're a buyer. They come up here and they sell off there, you wait for that information, and you sell off of it. See, it's not rocket science. Keep it simple. What do we do as traders? We make it hard. Why do we make it hard? Because we think they're doing hard stuff. They're not doing anything hard. They're not doing a bit of hard stuff at all. Not at all. And all you got to do is spend time in the past. This is where you learn. You don't learn live trading. Get it out of your head that I'm going to learn trading live in the market because you're not going to learn squat trading live in the market. Oh, you'll learn some things. Yeah, I don't mean you won't learn anything, but you're not going to learn what you need to learn, okay? You need to learn why did they make that move right there on a sideways move here? Why did they do that right there? How did they know to do that, All right? I have to learn how they knew, learned to do that. Well, how did they do that? They were going sideways trying to get it to go to the upside. They were not successful. Then the back D turned to the downside right there. They had a descending wedge right there. There's the result of that. Now, what were the two critical things there that made that move happen? The back D right here went down. We had a zero line break there. We broke the T3 right there, and we broke this bottom right here. That's the result of that information. That's not rocket science. That's not rocket science, folks. That's what they did with the information. Did you trade it? You go, I missed it. Why did you miss it? Well, because I was looking for my stupid indicator. My indicator it can't, it can't do it. It can't do it. Throw your indi If you have an indicator on your charts, throw it away with the exception of the MACD. Now, the MACD will give you a heads up here that you need to be very careful right here because MACD is going up, showing you that move right there. So the critical question is, what are they going to do when they hit this line right here? That's the critical question right now. And that means I need to learn this. The number one trade in the world to learn is to wait. You make money by waiting, not by trading. Yeah, exactly right, Tom. Exactly correct. All right. So Tom and I used to trade the river crossing in the old days. And he's reminding me of those old days, which are scary now, Tom. <laughs> really scary now. 
And Tom and I used to trade them in the old days. We're looking for the river crossing, man. Where's the river crossing? All right. Oh my gosh. Uh, before the descending wave, they had a single line trend on the bottom where they broke through it as they started moving. Yeah, exactly right. So for five pips, exactly right. Yeah. Thank God those are days are over. All right. So can everybody see the whole point here? And Harold's going, yeah, I remember those days too. Harold was with me. In. What do we meet? Harold, 2004, 2005 in Chicago? 2004, 2005 with Harold? 2005. Look at that. 15 years ago, Harold and I met in Chicago. Wow, crazy. Those are the, I won't call them the good old days, but they were the old days, right, Harold? <laughs> so there you go. Crazy. All right. So what the chart tells us is what we have to learn. All right. The chart is not doing rocket science. It is not doing fantastic stuff. They're doing very simplistic stuff. And the nature of a trader is to make it more complicated than it is. That's the nature of a trader. Make it more complicated than it is. All right. So you have to fight it. You have to keep it simple. Keep it simple. You'll be successful. Keep it simple. You'll be successful. Anytime a fast tracker gets in trouble, anytime a fast tracker gets in trouble, and this is for anybody here, I tell them to go over these charts right here where you have nothing on them, all right? The majors, we'll just take the pound here, right? Like this, take everything off here. And let's see what we would have done if we had only a couple of things on here. All right, so I'm gonna go up to a 240 chart, find, find a movement here. We'll take this down movement here. What would have happened if the only thing we had on this chart was a trend, right like that, proves the heart line. We had a set of fibs. Gotta go back in the past, find the fibs. Two things so far. There we go. Do they know them? Do they know them? Yep, they know them. All right. Yeah, they know them pretty well. All right. And I had an HSI. Three things. That's all I need. Three things. Find the top. Find the targets. Could I have been successful? Let me take it down to 60. Be easier to see. Could I have been successful in this move to the downside? The only three things I got on here is a set of fibs, a channel, and an HSI. Can everybody see what did they do with that information? Here they broke this, they went right to this. Then they broke that, they went right to this. We know direction because we got the channel. We know where the fibs are, we know where the fibs are, we know where the fibs are, all right? What did they do? They ran it down here, they ran it down here, and they ran it down here. What do I got on there? Three things. Three. I don't have anything else. Could I have been successful if I'd have just tried to figure out those three things? Three lousy things. Find the fibs, find the channel, which gives me direction, and find the, the targets in the wide open spaces. And only trade in the wide open spaces. Right there, right there, right there, right there, and right there. Could I have been successful? There's no rocket science in the Forex. Quit making it hard. Quit doing it. You don't need to do it. They're not doing rocket science. Yes, there's all kinds of nuances. And as we learn forensics, and there's a couple of lessons on forensics, you can see how they manipulated the market to make this happen. All right, so let me make these candles big. And let's just see how they, how do they do it coming down? News alert. All right. How did they do it coming down? Well, the first thing they did right over here, they did a they did a, a descending wedge right there. That resulted in that. They went to the fib, but they couldn't break to the target. So they did a bear flag and then they broke to the target without any problem. Then they did a flag and they went bam, bam, right to the target. And they actually went down to the next one. Then they came back up and went sideways, which created that move right there. All right. Is there any rocket science there? What did they do? 
Simple, simple, simple. Quit making it hard. All right, you can all see the other stuff that happened here. A break, hook, and go. A break, hook, and go. Uh, the break of the fib right there. Descending wedge is a break, hook, and go right there. See? This is not rocket science. How did I figure that huge channel? I just connected the tops. See, right there. One, two, three, four. I got two tops right there. Four tops right there. The four tops. What did they? What was their famous song, Thelma? What's the famous song from the Four Tops? There's a lot of them, but what was it? what was a big song from the Four Tops? Somebody here knows it. Uh, somebody knows it. Let's hang on to what we got. Something like that. I mean, there was a big. It was a band, big band in Motown. Remember that? Four Tops. Four Tops. But the Four Tops said, "Here's the deal." See this? We respect that. See that? 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 On the bottom? The bottom has to do with the support. All right? The bottom has to do with the support that's in line here. And do they know the heart line? All right? So the heart line, do they know the heart line? 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 See that? Yeah, there's whole lots of other stuff. Yeah, there you go. Jason's got it. Can't help myself. I love you and nobody else. Do, 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 do. There you go, Jason. Nice job. Way to go. Help me out there, buddy. Yeah, four tops. Exactly right. But you see, they didn't do anything in the sugar pie honey bunch. You know that I love you. Good job, Damon. All right. So this whole move down here with only three things on here, I can figure out what they did. All right. Now, if I can figure out what they did in the past using only a couple of pieces of information, could, hell, oh, there you go. Another one, baby, I need your loving. Got to have all your loving. There you go. <laughs> nice one, Jason. This, any line that has been confirmed by four points, points should be paid attention, even though it is just a support line, a single line trend line. The big words never do anything accidental. Great point, Bess. Exactly correct. They never do anything accidental. The whole point is to manipulate the market. Can everybody see the descending wedge right here? Gee, surprise, surprise. Is there surprises there? Then a bear flag. A, B, C, and there's the result of that right there. See, you can tell everything they did. Uh, it's good, it's good to see you, J Jamie. <laughs> exactly right, Tom. Uh, they didn't do anything. There's nothing there. There's nothing there that is rocket science. Quit looking at your MACD. I mean, you're not your MACD, but your indicator. As it doesn't have a he doesn't have a clue what's happening. Quit looking at that. Start learning how the price action actually works. How does price action work? The bankers have to talk to each other. Therefore, they have to do price action. They have to tell everybody in the charts what we're trying to do. And if you go back and you take a spot like this and you look at it, you'll be able to figure it out. Now, if you do this enough times in the past where you figured it out, you'll be able to figure it out in the future. Does that make sense? If I could figure out the clues that they took and made the moves in the past, could I not figure out what they're trying to do in the future? Because they're not doing rocket science. They're not going to throw me a curve. They're going to do one of three or four or five things. That's what they're going to do. And they're going to show me what it is. And therefore, I can take advantage of them just like the bankers do, because the bankers do it every time. All right? So obviously the lesson is keep it simple and that'll make it successful.